In the previous Booster BIM video on writing Revit API applications for multiple versions of Revit, we discussed that in 2013 we were using the endpoint property and the new line bound method. In 2014 these were marked obsolete and in 2014 a new method get endpoint and a new method create bound were introduced. In 2015 the obsolete methods were removed from the API, meaning that the 2015 application must use these new methods, whereas in 2014 we were able to use either the old obsolete ones or the newly introduced methods. Now we want to create an application that can run on both 2013, 2014, as well as Revit 2015. Now we'll look at how to do this. To start, we're going to go up here to the top of our Visual Studio interface and go to the Configuration Manager. I'm going to, for my upgrade tutorial project, create a new configuration called 2014. And a new one called 2015. I'll go up here to the Solution Configuration and also create one called 2014 and one called 2015. This now lets me choose from the drop down at the top to specify which of these configurations I want to build. The next thing we need to do though is we need to change which versions of the Revit API and Revit API UI DLLs are included for each of these two configurations. We're going to do that by making manual changes to the file that defines our project. Here you can see the text file for the csproj file created by Visual Studio. Before making any changes to this, it's always a great idea to make a copy in case something goes wrong. And now we can open up this in any text editor. In this case, I'll open it up in Notepad++. And we're going to scroll down to the section where the DLLs for the Revit API have been included. We can see here that the file includes references to the Revit Architecture 2014 versions of both of these files. The change we're going to make now is going to be to add an extra statement for the configuration which is going to be set to 2014 for the references to these two DLLs. Then I'm going to select these lines, copy, and paste them. In the copied version I'm going to change the configuration to 2015 for both lines and change the path to the DLL from the 2014 folder to the 2015 folder. We'll save this change. Visual Studio will tell us that the project has been changed, so we'll reload it. The next step will be to describe which set of code will be used in 2013 and which set of code will be used in 2014 and 2015. We do this using a special notation where we put the pound sign an if statement, and then we need to define these conditional compilation symbols for our different configurations. For the 2015 configuration, I'm going to call it release 2015, and for the 2014 configuration, the compilation symbol will be release 2014. So now, in our, back in our source code, we can say that if it's release 2014, we're going to use the, these three lines of code shown here using the old methods, and then else we're going to use these new methods, 
and I will unhighlight or uncomment them here. Now you can see the code is grayed out because the current configuration is 2015. And if I switch to 2014, then the other lines of code are grayed out as well instead. This allows me to then compile a 2014 version and then separately switch my configuration to 2015 and compile the 2015 version. If we open the containing folder, you can now see two new folders have been created. A 2015 folder that has a 2015 specific version of the DLL and a 2014 folder that has the 2014 specific version of my DLL. Now I'll change my add-in files so that the 2013 add-in uses the DLL in the 2014 folder because in 2014 I'm using the methods that existed both in the 2013 and 2014 API. The 2014 version you can use either one, the 2013 or the, the 2015 version. So we'll change that to 2014. And the 2015 will have to use the 2015 version of the DLL because it cannot use the code that is removed from the Revit API. Now, you might ask, well, could I just have gone into Visual Studio, gone back up to my upgrade tutorial folder, selected all my files, and just made a completely separate and detached copy, change the references there, change the code from the old obsoleted code to the new API code? And yes, I could have, but if I wanted to con continue developing this application for multiple versions, let's say I want to add Again, just to make a simple change, I want to add a uh, status prompt in my selection so that it says select a curve. And if you don't select an arc, I want to add a text a task dialog. And all this code is the same no matter what version it is, 2013, 2014, or 2015. And I don't want to have to start going back and making those changes in two different sets of uh, code because that just makes everything more error prone and more difficult to maintain. So with these changes made, you can now see in 2013, we have the status prompt for select a curve. If I pick a line, I get the error message. If I pick the curve, the line is successfully created. And switching to 2015, we'll see the same thing, that the new error has been added, the line is successfully created in the 2015 API, but the code that's being used is controlled by which configuration is set in Visual Studio. So for 2015, the code's going through this path. For 2014 the and 2013, the code's going through that path. And any other changes I make to this application, such as this task dialog or the status prompt, only need to be made in one place. It will only be the changes that are specific to the API for a given release that have been marked obsolete and then removed where I will have to do this branching. And by keeping this as limited and localized as possible, the end result will be much more maintainable and high quality code for multiple versions of Revit.